Alrighty, I have like three hours till I have to go to work. Um, so you know what? I thought, why not get on Risk of Rain 2? Because I've had this idea sort of jumbling around in my head for a while that, hey, you know, I've, I've gotten all these logbook entries, gotten all the achievements, you know, I've done all this fun stuff. Um, actually, did I get the heretic? I did, yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, I've got this, this profile. Um, but I was like, you know what would be kind of fun to do? Um, cause this profile has been around ever since I got it, like way back when it first came out in early access. And I've even put this profile through some mods, um, which has done things to my survivor stats, such as this, where my most picked survivor is Beetleguard, who I've picked apparently 13,000 times because a mod probably glitched it out and yeah, now my uh, stats screen is a little messed up in some areas. So I was like, to get a pure stats screen and one that is more representative of, um, I guess, like, Risk of Rain 2 in its sort of full essence compared to just Risk of Rain 2... Um, when it when it like first came out because obviously there's going to be a lot more choices of uh of um you know like commando and other characters that have been around longer than there are going to be of the newer characters um i'm like let's make a new profile specifically for uh For like, you know, just starting over. And I'm going to also add like a bit of a rule to this profile. I am not allowed to go any easier than Monsoon difficulty. And I think for the most part, I will try to stick to Eclipse mode only. Um, so we're going to see if we can get like a 100% complete profile. Monsoon only... Monsoon and Eclipse only with, uh, um, <clears throat> no mods. Yeah, no mods. Cause that's, that's going to mess up the results screen. Sorry. I'm busy trying to get the chat to show up on my phone because for whatever reason, it does not want to do that. There we go. Alright, so let's actually get started then. Um, we'll just hop right into Eclipse mode here. Ah yes, we get to start with either Commando or Huntress nowadays. Um, honestly, I think I'll try Huntress first. But I think I'm better with Commando than I am with Huntress. Um, but yeah, this... The, the the biggest challenge of trying to stay to Eclipse only and why I might end up switching over to Monsoon every once in a while is some of the, you know, every time you win Eclipse, it gets harder and harder and harder. So you sort of have to try to get the really hard or obnoxious challenges out of the way first in order to uh, make sure that you don't have to do something annoying like pushing Hermit Crabs off the stage on Eclipse 8, where you, like, permanently take damage and all that. Um, this is also just going to be kind of like a nice window into what a new profile kind of feels like nowadays, because, you know, it's been so long since I've had that experience, and, uh, I wonder if it's any easier or harder than it was way back in the day. I'm, I'm gonna, I have a feeling it'll be, uh, easier. I feel like a lot of the changes they've made over time have made the game easier. Not, like, substantially in, like, a boring way, but, like, in a way where it was just kind of, like, broken before 
Um, and so they fixed a lot of the things that were broken. So, like, it's easier because it's more fair rather than um, kind of the difficulty from from early on. A lot of it was because of broken game mechanics uh, that you couldn't really change or react to. You were just kind of forced to take the L in a lot of situations. Let's try not to get gangbanged by some blazing elites. Ah, and our first unlock of the profile. Kill an elite type enemy. Ooh, a legendary. I mean, Frost Relic could be better, but it also could be worse, so. At least it's some form of a uh, AoE. Now, we do have some money, so let's try to find areas to spend that money. Because what good is money if it's not making you any profit? Oh, there's an equipment barrel right off here in the distance. Oh, I can't ping it because I'm bad. Um, but this will also force me to kind of use some survivor abilities that I haven't used in a long time because I won't have the ones that I typically use unlocked. Uh, for example, I don't use Huntress's default primary or uh, special, so actually having to use Arrow Rain is very interesting. I'm going to be honest with you, it's better than I remember it being. It's still, in my opinion, not as good as the Ballista, but... Better than I remember. Is there anything up there? I don't I don't think so. Okay. Red Whip is gonna be nice for traversing the stage in a reasonable amount of time. There we go. Honestly, not bad items we've been getting, especially for not having all the items unlocked. All right, big chest and a small chest. Then I think after these, that should be just about everything on this map. Honestly, Huntress is more fun than I remember her being. Uh, never really liked her sort of Play style it always felt like it was a little too weak despite the fact that um, it was supposed to be strong I don't know I guess her main advantage is kind of her mobility compared to at least some of the other early game characters like commando and engineer She's got mobility and range. A lot of characters who have mobility are melee, so I guess that's kind of her big thing. I don't know, her bow always just didn't feel like it would kill enemies within a reasonable amount of time, and the fact that it has to lock on from a certain range always hit me the wrong way, but I think they've improved that. Um, uh, quite substantially by now. Ow. I think that just straight up missed. Oh yeah, not to mention she can uh, run while firing, which is, you know, kind of an interesting gimmick, I guess. Dude, what is up with my audio? Why does it keep cutting out? Oh, thank god. Kind of forgot that I needed to have cover nearby when dealing with a wandering vagrant. 
And this is only Eclipse 1, so our only hazard is that we spawn into a level with half HP, which can be a bit of an issue, but most of the time is not. Like, all I need is like one or two decent healing items, and it becomes like a non-issue. And another part of my plan with this new Game Plus profile is that I'm not going to make be making any progress on it unless if it's on stream. Because, um, you know, I want to share in this journey. Ooh, our second unlock. Complete a teleporter event. You know, I want, I want to have it documented. So be able to look back myself even and just see the progress that we make. But of course the goal is to get all the logbook entries and to hopefully beat every tier of Eclipse, which that's the one thing I still haven't even done on my main profile is beat every tier of Eclipse, so. That's kind of why I'm forcing myself to do Eclipse only on this new profile to see if I can maybe beat every tier of Eclipse faster by, by just forcing myself to play on it. An equipment? Ooh, I will take that over the Volcanic Egg, because Volcanic Egg is great for mobility, but Huntress doesn't need mobility. She needs killing power. Ooh, now the question is, do you want Lensmaker's Glasses or Soldier's Syringe? Honestly, I think Soldier's Syringe is going to provide more consistent benefits than Lensmaker's Glasses, but it is really a close call. I think I also need to crank up my audio just a teeny bit, like that. It's It was a little hard to hear things, so hopefully this is a bit more appropriate. If I find that it's still too loud, I'll turn it down. Or, you know, if it, if it becomes too loud after that change, rather. Dude, I don't know how to speak the English language, not gonna lie. Excuse me, I did not see or even hear you, my good sir. Well, we do need to fail a Shrine of Chance three times in a row to unlock Paul's Goat Hoof, which is a very valuable item, so we might as well commit to that Shrine of Chance and see if we can get the unlock or just get our item. There's nothing back here, is there? I'll admit, it is kind of nice not having to aim all that much. Maybe I had Huntress all wrong, you know? Now, I know there's some different approaches as to how you can play this uh, game. I prefer to try to full loot, at least get as close to full looting a stage as possible. But, you know, I have tried rushing before. It has, it has given me some positive results, but more often than not, I, I don't think I've got the rusher's mentality, you know? I, uh, I always just end up being just a little too slow to be able to consistently rush. All right, sweet, Paul's goat hoof unlocked. We will now ignore that shrine of chance because it has gotten way too expensive to try to get the payout. Uh, right. Any enemies I can see? Ah, uh, there's some beetles up here. All right, cool. Glad that that worked so well. Come on. Whatever. I've got enough money. Uh, of these, I'll take my chances on a random. Honestly, I think that was probably the best item we could have got. Even though it's not going to be very helpful during the Mithrix fight, I still think that was the best item we could have got. Okay. Teleporter is right there. 
Oh no, I can't even see these beetles. No! Where are more chests? I am owed a chest. Bandolier for any of my greens? Uh, no. Now, do we have enough for this chest? Yes, we do. Let's open it up. A old war stealth kit. I also have to remember I no longer have any of my lunar coins from my older profile, so I actually have to save up again if I want to unlock, like, Artificer. I also need to obliterate at some point, which I don't know if you can do on Eclipse to unlock mercenary. So that might be one of the reasons why I have to switch over to Monsoon, because I don't know if Eclipse lets you obliterate. Oh! Resonance disc? I mean... That's probably better than Frost Relic, at least. I don't think... Like, what... What legendaries do you have uh, unlocked from the very beginning? Because we have, because uh, I know that there's some good ones that are locked behind um, challenges, like brain stocks. So, like, are all the good legendaries behind um, unlocks? Ooh, a soda. All right, you know what? Sticky bomb for a soda. I'll take that trade. Energy drink, rather. You know. You know what I mean. Alright, so that should be just about everything on this stage. So let's actually get to the teleporter. Ooh. Come on. There we go. And then... Over this wall, just in case there's a chest back here. Which there doesn't appear to be. So let's go do the teleporter. This is much better. I'm actually able to traverse the level at a decent pace. Also, this is horrifying. The amount of stone golems that there are. I think I missed, but that's okay. Just use the environment. Use the environment. Use the environment and your teleport. Oop. Bronze contraption? Okay, boss is down at least. Probably thanks to Resonance Disc. Thank you, Resonance Disc. I should use my equipment more. I forget that um, Sawmerang doesn't really have that long of a cooldown. I tend to just always save offensive equipments for boss fights, uh, even though there are more use cases you can get out of them. I also see something that can be purchased there. It's a broken gunner drone. Oh, and there's something up there, a turret. I can quickly grab those. I've got the movement speed to make that not cost, like, too much time. Just need to climb up here. Alright, back to the teleporter. So I don't know if I'm going to keep looping on this very first run. Oh, crap. I need to go to the secret area on stage two now. I remember. Oh, well, maybe next time. Oh, and I'm going to have to reach this place um, in under 10 minutes to unlock the Freon Accumulator. So that, that'll be fun, too. I See, all the unlocks that I have to go out of my way for, I'm going to have to, like, re-remember because... 
I did them so long ago that, like, they're not even within my brain anymore. You, my good sir, require special attention. Please die. Thank you. A tri-tip. That could be useful. Now, I do see the Shrine of Order, but I don't even have one singular lunar coin to my name to spend on it. How much are the big chests? 312? You've got to be kidding me, man. That's my entire life savings. All right, well, that's the chest bot. We'll see if there's anything up here. There is, surprisingly. Fungus! Discovered 10 unique white items, and I finally picked up my first lunar coin. Seriously? After full looting, like, every stage, only by stage 3 do I have 10 unique white items? I mean, fair enough, I guess. I also have to remember the character-specific unlocks. Like, I think, what, Huntress has, like, get 12 crowbars or something. Maybe I should loop while it's still easy, you know, while we're still on Eclipse 1. I should just loop as much as possible to uh, try to get some of the, like, later game stuff out of the way. Like, I don't know, killing scavengers and things. I don't know if those are locked to anything. I know they're, like, Akrid has kill a scavenger is one of his character things. So, yeah, we'll see. Please target the blazing elite. Oh my god. Gasoline. Plus, even though we're kind of okay at handling crowds of enemies right now, we're not going to be great at dealing with single target Mythrix. Um, and I feel like looping, even though it will make Mythrix harder, it will probably make our lives overall easier. We are actually getting three debuffs on enemies, so maybe getting a death mark would help significantly with our damage output. And I'll trade one bandolier for a death mark, yeah. Not to mention, as we get more items, Deathmark will only become easier and easier to proc. So, invest early. Maybe when it comes to Loader, that's when we'll go fast. Because I know Loader can really handle going fast and even has a, an unlock behind it. You know what? You're just... You're just tanky enough for me to use my equipment on, because otherwise it'll be annoying trying to take you out. Alright, we have money, we just need to go find some ways to spend it. So let's stop dilly-dallying and let's look around for chests. Focus crystal? Yeah, focus crystal. <laughs> Bustling Fungus isn't going to be that good because we have to keep uh, moving around as this character and... Uh, what what was my other choice? Monster Tooth? Yeah, I mean, that's okay, but... Alright, of these, probably want an Armor Repulsion Plate. Make those multi-hitting low damage moves uh, obsolete. Because slow single-hitting attacks could be easily dodged with a good teleportation timed, but multi-hitting moves might last long enough to hit me, even after I'm done teleporting. 
Alright, a war banner. That'll be nice for teleporter fights, because it's just kind of a buff. Alright, again, we have enough money. We should focus on chests, not on enemies. Okay, sticky bomb. This seems to be just about everything that this level has to offer, so let's go do the teleporter. And I see we have already gotten ourselves a free blue orb. I don't know if we get any unlocks just by visiting the place, but we could give it a shot. Oh man, I'm also going to need to get the environment locks. That means for the secret areas, remembering where those books are, and for the non-secret areas, hoping to get radar scanners. Man, Magma Worm just got eviscerated. Also, loving the leeching seeds. Those are going to be super good for my arrow rain. Although, now that I remember, the arrow rain has like a lower proc something, proc coefficient, so it's going to like heal less despite hitting more rapidly. Yada, yada, yada. Whatever. Leeching seed, good healing item. Changed my mind. Hello. Can't touch this. You know what? I'm having a surprising amount of fun as Huntress. This is what this this project was all about, you know? Forcing myself back into the early days and seeing what I can scrounge up. Now, because I do have to go to work in roughly three hours, uh, I need to not loop too, too much. Um, but I can certainly handle at least one more loop for this run. Why am I killing this guy? Just, just go through the portal. No benefit to killing him. Now, do we go to the void right now and try to unlock Akrid. I don't know, because we could get unlucky or lucky with our enemies. Now, I will save my Luna Coins for Artificer first and foremost. Um, do I want either of these? Not really. Like, maybe an Old War Stealth Kit could save my life, but my Whites are kinda good, so yeah. I didn't even bother with the scrapper, because, like, it's a scrapper. Like, who cares? Alright, there's the environment log for this place. I did remember this one. Ah, no, to get the environment log in void fields, you have to step out of the cell vent while it's active um, and, like, search around the bottom of the map. I think that one's going to be best saved for, like, a loader run. Or maybe Artificer, but not this run. This run's going too well. Uh, little life hack here in the void. We can just use our bustling fungus to heal up to full before we even start the cell vent. Now, Bison is not the, the worst first enemy to have. Because it's melee only, it should be pretty easy to avoid, and on some cell vents, just straight up deny it from even reaching me in the first place. Of course, there could be easier, but I'm just saying, like, at least it's not like birds or elder Lemurians or something, you know? It is making my sh screen shake like crazy, though. <laughs> Whoa! Surprise! They do hit pretty hard though, so I actually have to be careful and try to dodge. No! This guy got super low and then I let his shield regenerate. Alright. Stun Grenade. I mean, it's something. Stun Grenade is probably one of those items that's better than I think it is. 
because its effect is so hard to notice, but it probably actually helps a sig significant amount. Now, five sticky bombs is quite terrifying because it means getting hit by a bison could be like instant death. But luckily, I can see the sticky bomb on myself and like try to teleport right as it explodes in order to avoid my fate. Keep those stacks of bleed. That's what's gonna kill him. Ah, uh, yes. The Samarang bleed combo. With only one try to. <laughs> Oh yeah, isn't another one of Huntress's just complete like the third stage without falling below 100% health? Yeah, that, that one's gonna be a bit annoying. Commandos are all pretty annoying if I remember because they're like overloading worm and like stage 20. Luckily our armor repulsion plates make the, the void itself do like zero damage to us. All right, see, this is the more annoying kind of enemy that I was expecting, but our armor repulsion plates are kind of suited to hopefully make him, make them less efficient. And a topaz brooch is gonna be incredibly helpful for not die. Topaz brooch is like a 10 out of 10 item. I think bison should be our priority to focus. Well, just dealing with the orbs whenever I have a free moment, because the orbs probably are gonna be less threatening. Granted, when they put sticky bomb on me, that might be a bit annoying. See, look, here's stun grenade already like stunning them several times. Like I should be like, thank you, stun grenade. Now, the newest DLC, Survivors of the Void, has been in development, announced, teased several times, such and such, by now. Um, and it's coming out, like, what, like March or something? Well, maybe not specifically March. Didn't they just say, like, early 2022, spring 2022, something like that? Quarter 2 2022, maybe? So, I guess that wouldn't really be March, but you get the point, like... It's gonna come out sometime in the near-ish future, so my, my goal is to hopefully have this New Game Plus profile 100% completed before it comes out to to kind of have the, the stats and whatnot to show off for just like the definitive Risk of Rain 2 experience pre-DLC. Um, and then of course when the DLC comes out, I'll, I'll be playing that on the New Game Plus profile. Uh, as well as on my main profile. In fact, maybe not even on my main profile. After I get my new game plus profile 100% complete, I might just use it as my main profile and then use my main profile as my like modded profile. So that way it can keep the broken sort of results and glitchiness that often comes with modding. All right, monster tooth. Might also just keep my main profile around for multiplayer um, and keep the new game plus profile as single player only. Well, we'll see. We've still got time before we figure that stuff out. After all, it is only our first run. Also, let's let's talk about how uh, nasty the void has been treating us. Try tip dagger on the soulless probe unit as well as now we have birds as our enemy. Like, this is just highly rude. Depending on what items and enemies pop up in the future, I might have to leave this one early and just take the couple of free items I got and not worry about trying to get the legendary and accurate. Because that's just how it is sometimes. Like, if they, if they straight up give me, like, a... Unstable Tesla Coil as their legendary, or even like a Dio's best friend, that might be like emergency leave protocol. Leeching Seed is gonna be nice. 
Let's heal up to full before we start this. Alright. This cell vent's gonna be a bit risque, because the uh, bison can actually reach us here. I don't really want to teleport because it makes me leave the cell, but honestly that might be for the best since being out in the void doesn't really hurt that bad. Okay. So... New plan. Let's head back to the cell vent. Sit still for as long as we possibly can. All right, oh, thank God. I forgot I had left in Daisy. <laughs> now you might be saying with that near-death experience, shouldn't I learn and just leave? No. What I think I've learned is that leaving the cell vent for survival purposes is a very valid and necessary strategy. If it gets too hectic here, just teleport away and you'll survive out in the void much better than you probably will here in this bubble. <laughs> Also, Deathmark as their item is really not that bad, so we can keep this up. I'm stupid. Don't worry, I saved it. Okay. See, this this should not be bad again. That was one of the worst cell vents because it gives the uh, bison an opportunity to actually attack, but this one will be left with just flying enemies. Oh, good, Elder Lemurian. Well, here's the plan. Basically, the moment we see an Elder Lemurian, if it doesn't die within two seconds, we leave, because... <laughs> Otherwise, I don't think we're going to survive. Dude, that's the problem with going to Void on, like, stage four. You just get something like Elder Lemurian. All right, it didn't die immediately. You know what? That's our cue to just get out of here. Straight up, like... No joke. <laughs> we'll just take those couple of free items we got and be on our way. Unfortunate we couldn't get our legendary and get Akrid unlocked, but you know, that's just how it is. I'd rather be alive than dead, that's for sure. Oh, Jesus Christ, a blazing Elder Lemurian. You've got to be kidding me, dude. Oh god, why am I getting this close to it? Oh god. Please, I don't want to die. Item. Save me. Oh, actually saved me. I mean, not not quite yet, but you get the point. Like, this is gonna be incredibly helpful. Okay, let's get behind some cover. Teleport out. Hit him with the arrow rain. Teleport away. There we go. Okay. Born fruit could honestly be pretty good. But I think I need the the damage output of Samarang. Please, I need item. I hate you. How do you unlock Hopu Feather? Or is it unlocked by default? Because either way, I could use some Hopu Feather to, like, help me dodge. Get behind cover, get behind cover.
I need items! I hate your Shrine of Chance. Letting Frost Relic try to do some, some work for me. Uh, the question is, will we save up for the Legendary? And I think the answer is maybe, if we happen to accidentally do so. I'm terrified to interact with those Shrines of Combat, despite the fact that they will be my greatest source of income. Because they might spawn, like, blazing Elder Lemurians, and then my game is over. Please, I need items. Why do Shrines of Chance hate me? Oh, there's a monster log. Thank you, Shrine of Chance. Finally. Oh, and Gore's Tome actually coming in to help. Okay, chest. Okay, bison steak. It's not nothing. Sometimes you need that extra 25 HP, you know? Like when I was almost burning to death earlier. Man, I don't even have tougher times unlocked because you have to die like 10 times to get it or something, right? Alright, mushrooms should be easy to take down so we can start building up our income. Alright, we've got some money. Let's f try to find something to spend it on. Let's go up here. Whoa. Oh! Okay, if we can find a scrapper, that'll be amazing. If we can't, it still is really good, so... Oh! Legendary! Okay, admittedly, not the greatest, but might be what I need if I want to uh, try to not have all the aggro on me at all times. Admittedly, them spawning with half HP is not ideal, but like I said, you know, better than nothing, I guess. Okay, 4,417 is the legendary chest price. So just keep that in mind while we peruse for other chests. Okay. It's kind of kind of interesting how I'm not not seeing chests. Oh god. All right. I'm on fire. It is making me incredibly uncomfortable. All right, you know what? I could use a bit of cash, so yeah, that honestly isn't that bad. One wandering vagrant? I can deal with that easily. All right, well, let's try not to take all of my HP and fall damage, maybe? Let's also just try not to let it kill us. Oh. No, 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 no. There's some Lemurians. Luckily, they're not elites. Okay. Let's go down here. Equipment, or just a regular old barrel. Oh, here we go. Give me... Topaz Birch. Thank you.
Okay, bustling fungus is not terrible. Keep in mind, there is the lens maker's glasses printer. You just need to maybe find a scrapper first. If not, still use it anyway because that will drastically increase your damage. All right, admittedly, I'm thinking we're running out of chests here, so probably should just get this teleporter started. Then we can worry about the uh, printer after enemies stop spawning. Try not to take all of your HP in fall damage. Try not to run straight through some blazing enemies. Try to maybe get some more banner buff. This is going not too bad. Please, give me back my healing drone. You monsters. Uh oh. Yeah, don't want to be sucked in by that thing. I know that they're healing, but I can't do much about it, except for wait for them to be done. I mean, I'm obviously going to keep shooting them, but at the end of the day, I don't exactly have the most control in this situation. All right, they're dead. What's my item? Red whip. Uh, could be much better at this point in the game, honestly. I didn't get quite enough money, but using the Shrine of Combat, I might get enough money for the Legendary, as well as just cleaning up some of these remaining enemies. Oh yeah, I think I got enough now. Sweet! Alright, now where was it again? It was like over here. Yeah. And this was also where the lens maker's printer was, right? No, it was up. It was up. I remember now. Alien head. Alright, that's gonna be good. That's gonna be really, really good, honestly. Alright. Now let's go ahead and... Take a couple uses of this. Please don't take anything good. Yeah, that's a really good trade. That's a really good trade. That's a really good trade. Holy crap. That's a really good trade. I think I might try to go for guaranteed. That's, that's a bad trade. That is not what you want to see. That's also a bad trade. Please. Please. All right. That's a good trade, and I also unlock the fireworks. That's kind of a bad trade, but you know what? It'll be okay. That's not exactly ideal, but probably for the best. And then, all right, I would. On, I'm honestly pretty happy with the ten items it took from me. Uh, like all except for the tri-tip, I would say were definitely like worthy trades. Tri-tip was kind of disappointing to lose, but guaranteed crit. Like, double damage now is very necessary. Nice try. Honestly, I could kind of see the appeal to Huntress now, because you really do have to be like very fast-paced and agile. She can't really take a lot of hits, but she's got a lot of tools at her disposal to make sure she doesn't take a lot of hits. I can see why many enjoy it. It's still not exactly my kind of play style. I like to be able to just kind of face tank with loader and things like that, but... 
It's been fun. It's certainly been fun. Ooh, Jesus. Gotta be a bit careful with that uh, teleport now. Alright, excuse you, good sir. I was busy trying to enjoy my lovely day. Alright. Oh, is there another boss guy? There is. Maybe I ignore him and just focus on trying to get chests. Oh, wow. Funded all in one run. Interesting. I mean, I guess now that I think about it, it isn't that hard to do, but I just, you know, never really considered it before. That's, that's another one of those fun side effects of starting over, but now with a bunch of game knowledge and all that. Uh, something is hurting. Uh, Hapu Feather. Necessary. Necessary. Any of these important Gorag's Opus could be good, but we don't really need to replace Samarang, honestly. Healing chest. Very cool. Alright, well, bustling fungus, not great. If I can find a scrapper, I've honestly got enough items that I want to just kind of get rid of to really make the scrapper worth it. Alright. I don't think that arrow rain is hitting them, but that's okay. Alright, Focus Crystal. Honestly, the game's been kind of screwing me lately with the items it's been giving me. I could use some much, much better things. Alright, now the question is, do I actually want to loop or do I want to keep going? I don't know. Or, like, sorry, do I want to loop or do I want to fight Mythics? And I don't know the answer. Because it's getting quite tough um, right now, and I'm worried how bad Mythrix will be if I let it continue. ATG, necessary. Honestly, I was tempted by another Hapu Feather, but I think ATG was much more necessary. Uh-oh. If we are gonna loop, we could try getting an artifact. I actually uh, forgot that artifacts are gonna be things I have to unlock. That, I might end up just looking up the codes instead of trying to find them all the legit way, because I honestly don't remember and a lot of them are hidden in really weird and bullcrap places, and hey, would you look at that, a scrapper. It's just tedious to find the codes and then to either remember them or write them down. Deal 5,000 damage in one shot. Well, I'm glad that I managed to pull that off somehow, but... Uh... You know, an interesting question for, like enemies getting items like they do in the void fields or with like artifact of evolution is do they get items from your item pool or do they get items from all the items in the game because you know me just unlocking tesla coil means like you know if they couldn't use tesla coil before that was awesome but now that now they can and that's obviously not ideal All right, well, we've got more money. Oh, this is what I wanted to buy. Hey man, I'm all aboard the drone train. They, they've they been really improved ever since the early days. They scale with enemies now and all that fun stuff. Even if I'm spawning them in at half HP, I think they're worth it, especially even if it's just to draw aggro. Like that is a valuable thing. Activate six turrets in a single run. Squid polyp unlocked? Ooh, did I just get a parent's ghost? 
pretty cool. Um, any chests down here that I might have skipped over? Doesn't look like it. Alright, let's keep moving. Again, I don't know if that arrow rain is hitting. That's the biggest problem with arrow rain, really, is the flying enemies. Um, Chrono Bobble? I think I might already have one. Oh, yeah, I had two. Uh, probably could have picked something better then, but... Hey, man, the slowdown is valuable for, like, running away and such. Ow! I don't appreciate having my movement speed slowed. Alright, uh, looks like we've made it back to the start of the level, so let's go ahead and do the teleporter. I think I will loop, um, and we will do an artifact. Please. I'm so scared. There's so much going on. Whatever. It's working. There was a monster tooth printer and some other printer. I don't know. We've got a couple of printers here, but maybe I should just hold on to the scrap. I don't know how I reached increased movement speed, but I'll take it, I guess. I'm also realizing now I'm going to have to unlock Rex at some point by taking the fuel array. I don't think this would have been the run for it, but... Hey, looping will help us get those late game monster logs as well, you know. I think the last ever monster log I got was for overloading worm. <laughs> okay, let's try to look at our printers. So we've got monster tooth and there was one over here for bison steak. Uh, neither of those are probably worth printing. Maybe Monster Tooth to keep myself and allies who happen to get close full, uh, on health. I just don't like holding on to scrap for too long. It makes me feel like I'm not, you know, like I'm wasting potential. But at the same time, you know, if I hold on to scrap for just like an extra stage and that gets me like a, you know, a tri-tip printer or, uh soldier syringe printer then it was all worth it you know okay now i have to remember where the scrapper even was it was like uh over here yep okay so let's just kind of go down the list i don't want you um i don't want you be a little careful here. There are still enemies out and about. I don't want... Uh, probably you. Because those will quickly become irrelevant as many enemies are immune to stun. And that seems good on that category. Now on the greens... I'm quite happy with my greens. Um, yeah, so that's probably all the scrapping we need to do. And I will hold on to the eight white scrap. I don't think turning that all into monster tooth or bison steak will make much of a difference. And sure, we'll just go for the artifact it shows right here. Wait, can you not? Oh, did they change to where you can't do this after doing the teleporter event? Oh, well, that makes me feel stupid, but good lesson to learn. I guess it's been a while since since I've played or something. <laughs> or just been a while since I've gone for an artifact, rather. 
but lesson learned. The stupid Celestine beetle is making everything just a little bit more irritating than it has to be. Alright, well, hopefully... You know what? It might have been better just to have exploded there, honestly. Oop, Lunar Coin. Oh! Please, I wish to not be here. Boy, if only I had some way to heal outside of combat. Too bad I got rid of my cautious slugs and... Uh... Oh, God. And bustling funguses. Alright, just gotta pick up the monster tooth drops. There you go. Alright, we have money. Let's stop killing things. Let's start buying things. Ooh, almost just went straight off the edge there. Alright. Left and Daisy, I guess I won't complain. Another scrapper. Challenge of the Mountain. Of course you have to do the Challenge of the Mountain. Are you crazy? Saying no to the Challenge of the Mountain is, is suicide. <laughs> it's free items. Definitely with no cost associated whatsoever. Careful of the Malachites, dude. They will screw you right over. That's a cool sh crashed ship location. I don't. I don't think I've seen that one before. Um, man, is this is this really all there's been for items? Okay, gasoline might be worth printing a whole bunch off because that is like some pretty decent AOE I don't actually remember how it stacks I think it stacks decently enough and then worst comes to worst we can always just scrap it again if we find that it wasn't what we were looking for but I think I think we want that, so let's... Oh, God. Alright, let's do the teleporter. Oh, I did not appreciate getting stuck when I tried to teleport to safety. I'm sorry, overloading Wandering Vagrant, you say? Oh! Okay. This might be one of those fights that we have to take outside the teleporter radius. Just so we can get to somewhere relatively safe. Oh god. Please, let me out. Oh no, I stepped on a Malachite spike. That does not mean I will run. Only cowards run. Men fight. Also because if I run, this guy will regenerate all of his shields and all my hard work will be gone. Uh, right behind this rock? This is definitely 100% free items. Ah, oh, 
de defeat an elite boss on Monsoon difficulty. Well, glad to have that. Alright, what the heck are you guys doing chilling out here? Let's try to go for the non-elite next to at least reduce the number of bosses I'm going to have to deal with. And it'll actually die and I can run away if I need to. Alright, it died. That is great news. I appreciate having the money to buy back my drones. It's been absurdly helpful. I appreciate that the chaos has died down a bit. There have been significantly less enemies spawning as of late. I'm going to be honest and say that it is surprising that I'm still alive. Straight up did not think I was going to last this boss fight. I think I will print the gasolines though. I think my crowd control was still lacking. And I think burn damage over time would be great, especially because it'll help proc a death mark. I think that it would be wise. You know what else would be wise? If this freaking boss would die. Get behind cover. All my drones are dead, as to be expected. Let's get behind cover yet again. Because honestly, that blast by itself could probably one-shot me if I'm not careful. Oh. Never mind. Alright, cool. <laughs> No, man, come on. Uh. Okay, well. Still not bad, I guess. We got quite a few unlocks. Um, made some progress. And hey, a non-victory means we still get to stay at easier Eclipse, so... <laughs> All right, let's jump right into another one, I guess. With Commando this time. Didn't unlock a single new character, which is really disappointing. Isn't one of the character unlocks just reach and complete the third teleporter event? I wonder why that didn't count. I thought that's how you unlock Bandit, is it not? Maybe it doesn't work on Eclipse for some reason? Or maybe I did something weird? I don't know. What the hell was that dodge roll? What? Is the dodge roll really that bad? Because the slide is like, you travel so much further and everything. What? What is this? It does, it like, it, it, what? Is that really what Commando's dodge roll is like? Oh my god, that is atrocious. <laughs> like, literally terrible. What, what good does that do? Does it even like... Yeah, it doesn't even, like, say it makes you invincible or anything, I think. So it's just straight up, like... Like, oh no, I, I'm about to get hit. Let me roll out of the way. Oh, it doesn't do anything. That's atrocious, dude. No wonder why the slide is, like, the only thing I ever use. That is... Just terrible. <laughs> It, it doesn't even feel satisfying. Okay, first item is, um, Aegis. That's a interesting first item, because I'm going to need to get some healing in order to even make it work. But, it is good. It is really, really good. Oh, 
Okay, you know what? The roll is okay if you want to go, like, while shooting, I guess. Because the roll at least makes you go at your sprint speed, which right now is bad, and me just sprinting and then trying to roll makes it look atrocious. But when you're in the middle of shooting and you can't sprint, being able to kind of quickly roll out of the way is... is it's, a, it's something... Crowbar is not going to be great. Personal shield generator is probably what I would take out of those. I know Kasha Slug has its place. I just... I don't know, man. I never run from, from a fight. And maybe I should. Maybe I really should. But... That's just not me. Commando is pretty satisfying, honestly. Like... Despite the fact that I still kind of think he's probably the worst character in the game, he's still satisfying and fun to play as, for sure. There's something enjoyable about just being a basic shooty guy. Not to mention, he does kind of get, like, the most insane benefits from items most of the time. Like, he just kind of scales well. Oop. Come on. There you go. And he, too, has, has been one of those survivors that has been constantly buffed since the early game, so playing him now is still quite an improvement over what playing him way back when felt like. Ooh. Shrine of the Mountain? I know this is how my last run ended, but come on, it's stage one. How bad could Shrine of the Mountain be? Watch it be like, you have now summoned three Beetle Queens. <laughs> Prepare to die by the hands of thousands of Beetle Guards and lack of AoE because you're a commando. If I could get a stage one ukulele, I would be very happy. Let me tell ya, I would be a happy, happy man. Stage one ukulele, kind of pog. Only at two Luna Coins. Won't be able to unlock Artificer anytime soon. Do I dare attempt to unlock a Rex this run? Maybe I do. This is not going to be the Prion Accumulator run. I'm already too slow for that. Much, much too slow. Soldier Syringe is probably one of the greatest items I love to see on Commando, so... You know what? Let's give it a shot. Why not? Let's try to unlock Rex. Because if we can unlock Rex, we might, like, seriously break through the roof in, in potential here. Because I'm actually pretty good at Rex, and Rex is uh, capable of killing things, unlike Commando and Huntress. <laughs> at least in my opinion. Squid Polyp, I'm so glad I unlocked you. Alright, time to immediately die because I picked up the fuel array. Uh, what did I tell you, dude? Beetle Queens. Luckily, this arena isn't too terrible, because if the Beetle Guards don't spawn up here, then I can kind of just avoid them by keeping the high ground. Oh. Do have to be a bit careful about all this acid. Try not to let the debuff bugs get to ya. Yeah, so we're kind of already in a losing position here, but do not worry. We can yet win the day. Really regretting picking up this fuel array. Maybe I should have saved it for, like, after I beat the teleporter, then gone and picked it up. But luckily... Dear God, this 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 ledge is very cheese, and it is very necessary. <laughs> oh, 
let's take care of the wisps because those things will actually hit me up here and we do not want that that's for sure Don't ask me how I'm not getting hit by the stone golems that keep jumping up here. So seriously, dude, this screen shake is ridiculous. Can I turn this down in the settings, maybe? Hold on. Okay, hold on, hold on. Screen shake scale. I never thought I would have to do this, but, but the day has come. My god, it is too much. Just constant screen shaking. Also, one Beetle Queen down? That is significant progress. Try to get rid of those debuff zones. Dude, stop jumping in the way of my bullets. I'm trying to kill the boss. Oh, didn't even notice the Lesser Wisps. Luckily, I do have two drones to help draw aggro. My god, the knockback on that beam was ridiculous and almost got me insta-killed. I'm dying. So, lesson learned. Do not peek your head over the ledge too far. Otherwise, you will instantly get exploded by 15 guys. Oh, careful. I think a beetle guard spawned above me. Okay, good. He fell. So I'm back to being relatively safe. Aw, uh, man. A queen's gland. Ugh. Okay, let's try and take care of the high level threat targets first. This is already a horrendous start. We are so far behind in terms of just, like, power. Okay, just grab this. Go. That was big right there. We needed that to happen. We just needed to get out of this stage. That was going to take us an extra, like, 20 minutes to kill all those enemies. Okay, a scrapper is valuable here. Let's actually remember to go to the secret this time. And now that I think about it, two Queen's Glands, I mean, that's something. I guess. Well, the... The Rex dream is still alive. Let's just hope we get the right stage four for it. that's always a bit irritating if you get just the wrong stage for what you're trying to do. Uh, no! Oh, I forgot I have the fuel array on my back. Maybe should be a little bit more careful about fall damage. I was just like, I'll make that. I make that easy. And I didn't make it. It's a jellyfish. I heard it. Also, I'm not going to forget the cave. I just want to get this equipment barrel. Actually, the cave is kind of dangerous with the fuel array, isn't it? Because it's going to have to spawn me back on the stage after I take a bunch of fall damage. I don't know. We'll see. YOLO. Hello. Find the altar to Nukahana. All right, hold on. You know what? Let's let's actually do a little bit of legitimate code keeping and screenshot that. Hey, look at that. You can get out without taking fall damage. Band for sorry, Topaz Brooch. Very good for wanting to not die.
My poor beetle guards. That's huge, huge money. Ooh. Speaking of money, I saw that. I saw that blood altar. Crowd control, very necessary. Also, didn't even notice I got a tri-tip at some point. That is muy, muy grande. Okay, I'll take it. Certainly will not deny more crowd control. Cape oh, I'm stupid. I'm the dumbest man alive. Uh, why did I do that? Uh, that that does that hurts. That hurts so much. I'm I am <laughs> yuming right now. Uh Once we get all the unlocks, we'll actually read the lore entries. I just want the new to go away. So we'll just quickly spam through these. I think I think after that that L I might not I might be done for the rest of the night. After all I do have a little bit more time, but uh, maybe I just want to relax, you know. Besides, we we got progress done. We did we did you know a pretty good huntress run. So yeah, I mean, why not, right? No need to super duper rush it. All right, so that's all that taken care of. And we have these wisp jellyfish. Marion and the environments we just have this hidden realm because I couldn't get anything else sweet so I guess we can take a look just to summarize our stats for the time being our longest run was just under an hour we've completed five stages at the most my nemesis is commando why? I don't know. Oh, probably because I blew up with the fuel array. That might be it. Favorite equipment is Samarang. Makes sense, because that's like the only one I've been using. So yeah, we've we've done some some dis decent stuff here. No fiery deaths yet. I know we need to do those eventually. Already 20% completed. So time's picked. Hunt commando and huntress time alive longest run deaths as damage dealt as <laughs> damage taken as damage dealt against wandering vagrant being the top seeing as it's like the only boss i've been fighting damage taken from lumerian very cool kills against lesser wisps i mean come on that's just standard practice at this point elite kills against lemurian deaths from commando i guess maybe that's just my self explosion and then wandering vagrant so yeah makes sense minion damage dealt as yeah huntress actually just made more progress so she's going to be kind of the lead in all of these all right well I think next time when I come back, we will do a commando run just to try and get him even Steven with Huntress. You don't know what? Nah, let's throw one more at it. Come on. You can't, you can't leave on that kind of a run. That's just, you can't do that. All right, we'll throw one more in. Let me quickly check just to make sure yep all right everything's all good yeah so we'll we'll we'll, we'll have this be the last run
Hello, beetle. And lesser wisp. And another beetle. Do I dare take the fuel array again? I think I dare. I think I dare. This time you just have to remember, no... No shrine of blood unless if you're like absolutely a hundred percent sure you can handle it somehow like you swapped off your equipment or maybe you had like topaz brooch overheal you so you actually don't go to below 50 percent hp I'm liking this stage one. I'm liking it. It's uh, the nice big open. Been letting me get some fairly easy kills. See what we've got up here on this hill. Ooh, dodge rolled. Get dodge rolled. I forget, how do I unlock the slide as commando? I should probably actually look at the character challenges on the character select screen since you can and it's not that hard. And it'll help give me maybe a bit more clear direction. Because I know, like, I think the frag grenade is killing an overloading worm. Uh, and then, like, the shatter blast is like... Oh, no, the shatter scatter blast or whatever is, like, kill an overloading worm. And then the frag, frag grenade is incorruptible. Where you complete 20 stages without a single lunar item. So, what's the slide? Is it just, like, get a bunch of movement speed? I honestly don't remember. Stage 1 scrapper. Eh. Stage 1, you just kind of want to keep all your items, honestly. Bustling fungus or random? I will take random. Medkit, better than bustling fungus. I thought I saw a barrel over here. Maybe I was mistaken. We'll come back for the shop over there. Oh, I did not see a barrel. I saw a chest. Even better. Armor plate. There is a drone next to the portal, the teleporter, so maybe that's something we get after the teleporter. We can leave some of the nearby things for afterward to quickly grab, and we'll worry about grabbing the far out things beforehand. The piercing phase blast is really hard to get to aim properly but when you do it can it can do some work for sure all right that's a nice boost to our funds let's try to find something maybe I will just buy this chest. All right, two personal shield generators. I mean, that can help make sure I don't freaking lose this. Uh, fuel array. I think maybe Huntress would be better to try to unlock Rex with if we don't succeed with Commando, because I think, at least with Huntress, if the fuel array is about to explode, you can teleport uh, at like the last second and it will negate the damage and you get to survive 
but obviously you just still don't get to keep the fuel array. That way at least the run doesn't end when I fail. All right, that seems like about it once I get the shopping terminal, so we will start the teleporter. Paul's Goat Hoof, very good to see you. Please, I don't want to die. Focus Crystal could be great, or not, because I messed it up. Oh god, there's a lot of boys. Alright, this is going to have to be one of those out of the teleporter charging situations. Dude, there's so many wisps. Should have probably dealt with some of those before starting the teleporter. Should have probably dealt with any of these enemies before starting the teleporter. Actually, no. Half of these guys spawned afterwards. Okay, so this is not going to be it. This is not going to be the one. This ain't it, chief. Etc. Etc. Okay, if we stand here, we might be a little bit safer. Okay, let's try to get rid of like a whisper too, since these guys pose some of the biggest threats to me right now. Thank God for my drones being able to take some aggro. Hello, beetles. I love just how non-threatening beetles are. Like, I literally was, like, right inside of them chilling to avoid the wandering vagrant. Alright, Deathmark can come in handy, but it would have been nice to get, like, a ukulele right now. That's what Commando really needs, is, like, stage one ukulele. The fact that I'm still alive is somewhat of a miracle, though. Okay, let's get grab our drone, grab our shop, and get the heck out of town. Almost 10 minutes on just the first stage? Jesus. Alright, Monster Tooth. I think healing is probably more important than Focus Crystal. Okay. Oh, geez. Well, here's one of the buttons. If we could push a pot onto that, that would be fantastic. But there's no nearby pots, so that's looking like... Oh, God, you gotta remember, you start the stage at half HP, which is already not good for fuel array. So try to keep that in mind when you're spawning in and immediately trying to fight a blazing elite. <laughs> okay, so... Oh! Jeez, man. I am all kinds of clumsy today. Any chests nearby? Hello? There's that chest. Alright. 
Let's see, we're 10 minutes in, so this chest should be really expensive. Oh, but a focus crystal. Hey man, I'll take any damage increase I can get my hands on. That button might have to be the button I stand on, and then the button I push a pot on might have to be the other one. Assuming the other one would be possible. 59. Dang, Shrine of Chance. So expensive. What else do we got here? We got some isolates. Oh my god. It's a real party down here. I don't even know what to target first. They're all so threatening. We're fine. And in fact, that was just a great way to add to our money. Please, Shrine of Chance. Now is not the time. Thank you. Actually necessary. Um, this isn't downright terrifying. What's wrong with you, game? Why are you giving me a freaking greater wisp on stage two? Probably because I'm slow. All right, I heard like 20,000 wisps spawn behind me. Alright, Jade Elephant. That's something I can hold on to during the stage so I don't explode. We just have to remember to actually come back for the other thing. Uh, I will take this, even though Armor Piercing Rounds would probably be better for Mithrix. Ah, uh, but look at that crowd control. Finally. Oh! We need, we need to print off at least a couple of those. If we can find a scrapper, we will be golden. All right, let's keep moving. So here's our second button. There's not even a pot anywhere in sight. Dude, we got screwed by our buttons. I mean, we might be able to get a pot on the first button, but this second button, there's literally not even a pot in sight. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> okay. I think it's teleporter time. Oh, and another gas canister. Very, very nice. All right, here we go. Jade elephant will help actually with surviving. Oh, let's go. All right, so we found our strategy. Actually targeting just weaker beetles will kill the tougher things faster than if we just targeted the tougher things. Thanks to our ridiculous crowd control. Ooh, Gore's Tome. All right. I mean, I will not complain about that. 
And remember, it's okay if we dip below half HP, because we picked up Jade Elephant. We got ourselves a Bizarre Between Time portal. But will this be... Oh, tri-tip. Okay, now this is the one, guys. This is the one where you unlock Rex. Like, actually. Oh, and here's a shopping terminal. And what is that? Equipment barrel, it looks like. Yeah. Alright, so shopping terminal. Oh! Thank you, Soldier Syringe. Right, we have to remember, we also have this soldier syringe printer we wanted. Alright, it's okay. Honestly, that's okay. We will we will take that. That's honestly okay, too. I want to get, like, five of these. Alright, that's a little kind of concerning, but maybe not. No! Alright, that's okay though. That put us at five soldier syringes, which is exactly what we wanted. Now let's just double check that this button doesn't have an easily pushable pot next to it. Oh yeah, it certainly does not. There's there's no pot nearby. Okay, so let's go to our other button and see if we can push a pot on it. And because we're going to go to blue, we don't need to save this money chunk. We'll just pick it up. Okay, we've got some pots over here, I guess, and that pot there. Um, yeah, I guess we'll start with this pot and see if we can't get it over. The, the dangerous part about this pot is that it could roll straight down the hill, like, to our right, and we would never see it again. Okay, hold on. Now we're getting somewhere. Oh. Oh. No, hold on. Yes. Sweet. All right. We're going to unlock the bands. Let's go. Now, Commando's probably one of the worst characters for the bands, but that's okay. I'm sure we'll eventually be able to proc them. And hey, you know, it'll be great for, like, when we unlock Rex this run, which we will totally do and we won't die, please. Alright. Perfect. 20 minutes, stage 2. Eh, I'm not concerned. We won't be looping this run, because it's getting close enough to the time when I should start getting ready for work that, uh... I wouldn't really be able to have the time to afford another loop. I'll just see if I can beat Mythric's first loop. Some movement speed would certainly be nice. <laughs> Our biggest waste of time is just simply traversing the stage. I should not be holding the fuel array still. Okay, just get rid of the blazing one and then everything will be fine. Oh! Somehow, that actually went surprisingly well. Alright, got the bands. Now we just have to run all the way back to the teleporter. And then we'll be good.
Now, we have a very powerful run because of our items, so we should be able to afford the, the time loss that has been occurring. Ooh, the question is, do you take Fuel Array to the Void? I mean, I think the obvious answer is no way in hell, 20 minutes Void with Fuel Array and limited healing. But, like, my brain is telling me, yes, yes. You know? I have five green items. I will take. I know that got rid of, like, one of our only sort of, uh, crowd control items, but shattering justice on commando is just, you can't, you can't say no. Besides, the bands weren't doing much for us, and whatever else we traded away I don't think was that significant either. Yeah, like a death mark. I think that was worth it. And yeah, I'm going to do the smart thing and not just commit suicide in the void fields. Let's just unlock Rex. We can worry about unlocking Acrid later. I don't even like Acrid that much, so it's not that big of a deal. Oh yeah, it's all coming together now. I'm loving this. Bleed stacks. Armor broken. Uh-oh. No, 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 no! Come on, man! Dude, like, that imp just came out of nowhere. Alright, well, there, that was your one more. Uh, <laughs> Still, still, uh, unlocking bands just by itself was pretty huge. And honestly, that was still fun for the lack of progress we made. I still, I still enjoyed that. So overall, we would call this a successful stream. Anyway, uh, that's going to be all for this one, but definitely keep tuning in either watch the stream back on youtube if you aren't here live or if you can show up to my twitch channel live uh to to watch more new game plus risk of rain 2 and hopefully one of these days we'll we'll get it all done until next time goodbye